this is a chimpanzee. It's hairy, has a relatively rounded mouth, and has some surprisingly sharp teeth capable of tearing through flesh rather easily. This is a human. As you can see, the hair is significantly toned down. The facial structure is different as well. Our mouths aren't so large. Now I could spend hours describing the differences between humans and chimpanzees, but the point is that there are massive disparities between the two species. However, we share about 99% of our DNA with these animals. How is it then that we can have so much in common genetically, yet we have produced significantly different creatures? And more importantly, can this relationship be found between small variations within the same species? To tackle the first question, we must first examine what is known as the butterfly effect. A concept that has its roots in the 1800s, it is the belief that a small difference in the initial conditions of a system can produce significantly larger changes down the line. This applies across disciplines, so angling a rocket one degree off course could cause it to end up miles or even light years away from its destination, depending on how far it is traveling. The same could be said about shooting a gun or throwing a ball. In the context of this video, we are focused on the effect it has on the biological phenotypes between species. In the cases of humans and chimpanzees, the 1% that we don't share produce a significantly different creature, so much so that they aren't even the same species. Of course, there are many factors that influence us as well, like gene expression and environmental factors, but it is still quite baffling to think that such a small difference could divide two species. But if small differences can create such a divide between species, could this also be applied within a species? For example, Men and women are about 98% the same genetically, which is an oceanic difference when compared to the chimpanzee numbers. And we've already seen how much a 1% difference could cause, so what about a 2% divide? Well, there are numerous things that occur because of this small variation. Neurologically speaking, male brains are significantly different than female brains. Part of it is hormonal, but part of it is also structural. A paper titled The Genetics of Sex Differences in Brain and Behavior, published in 2012, elucidates these sex differences quite well and helps to explain why men and women manifest their wills differently onto the world. I won't detail all the differences, but I will leave a link to it in the description so that you can read through if you want the whole spiel. The parts I'm more interested in are the ones that most impact intellectual ability. The bed nucleus of Stria terminalis, or BNST for short, which plays a role in moderating stress, has a larger volume in males. The amygdala, which is responsible for perceiving fear and other emotions, as well as processing messages from our senses and internal organs, is also larger in adult males than adult females. The cerebral cortex, which has a slew of roles including emotional processing, memory storage, language, and high-order thinking required for decision-making is larger in males as well. Lastly, in the Substantia nigra pars compacta, or SNPC for short, which is involved in the utilization of dopamine to help control motor functions, men have more dopaminergic neurons, which means they can produce and process dopamine at a higher volume. Now, how does this manifest itself in the real world? Well, women consistently report that they experience a greater deal of stress than their male counterparts. They also report having increased stress-related symptoms across the board, with the largest difference being in the feeling as though you need to cry category. This may be caused by their decreased volume in their BNST, which assists in modulating stress. In regards to the amygdala, it has been shown that men respond aggressively when placed in a fight or flight response situation, whereas women generally fold and attempt to use the tend and befriend response. 
which involves protecting your young and looking to the social group for protection. Is any of this surprising? Because we see this all the time. One need not look further than our slash dad reflexes to see men taking safety into their own hands. The cerebral cortex differences manifest themselves in the higher number of male philosophers, engineers, and other mentally intensive fields. It may also explain the incompetence of female leaders because their decision-making skills are compromised by lacking some volume in this region. Finally, we have the SNPC region, which could account for the increased hand-eye coordination of males. Now this is simply a small subset of differences between males and females, but this barely scratches the surface. The 2% difference creates significant aberrations between the genders, some of them being physical and some of them being mental. It is important to understand how significant those small percents are because they essentially define the boundaries between two different things. If you understand what makes things different, it enables you to see the value of each thing. For example, men may be better soldiers because of their physical prowess, but women may be better caretakers since that is their default mode of operation. By seeing things like this, you can utilize each aspect of your arsenal to its fullest effect. After all, anything can be a weapon if the man who holds it has the nerve and the will to make it so. Thanks for watching this video. I've been getting relatively busy recently since I'm moving soon. I'm also trying to learn how to make music, which is a lot more difficult than you would think, so that's sucking some of my time as well. I just said that to say, if my uploads become a little less consistent, now you know why. But yeah, like and subscribe for more content like this, and as always, stay prosperous.